Hello everyone, how are you going? And welcome to the world's coolest banknotes 2021. Now I checked and there isn't a 2022 version, but I can't imagine currency has changed too much. And so let's just see in 2021, who had the coolest banknotes voted by you. Banknotes are pocket-sized works of art, teeming with color, creativity, history, and innovation. So I asked my subscribers what their favorites are. I took the top answers and compiled a list of the world's very coolest present day banknotes as voted for by you. Let's start in no particular order with one of my personal favorites, the US $2 bill. Now US dollars are often regarded as one of the most boring currencies. I disagree, I think they're classics, full of history and culture, with the $2 for instance portraying third president Thomas Jefferson on the front, and the declaration of independence on the reverse. Now I'm kind of taken aback because I agree with what he said but then disagreed with in the fact that I never would have thought or I've never considered the US dollars at all, any of them, to be somewhat interesting. They're quite bland in terms of their colours but I guess when you get into the history of them they are pretty cool. I mean without reading it says the Declaration of Independence 1776. I don't think I would have really understood that but I guess that's going to be the case for every single country's banknotes. You're not going to get the historical references, often not even if you're from the country. But I have to give it to them, it is very detailed and the front is I guess similar to the rest of them if we have a look here. You know they're all fairly similar, some of them are in circles, some of them are just plain heads on pieces of paper and I think the colours have been majorly boosted there because I've never seen any bill looking well different as they do there. You know you've got a blue Benjamin for the sake. But what makes this bill so fascinating isn't the design, rather the myths and urban legends surrounding it. Okay. These notes are scarcely seen in circulation, to the point that a lot of Americans aren't even sure if they're real or not. There are countless reports of people being arrested for trying to use one, because both the cashiers and police didn't know they what? exist, and most people tend to hang on to them if they do encounter one. It's a common misconception that these notes are no longer printed. Wow. They are. This one here is from 2013, for example, but they only account for 1% of US banknotes. Wow, why? Like I said, why? Why is that the case? Why has the, I guess, I don't know if you'd call it the mint, it would be the mint in Australia, but why have they only printed, I guess, 1% of all the banknotes in the $2 form? That is so strange. I mean, I understand the one because you're going to need a lot of ones in terms of amount of them. And then I guess for currency reserves, you're going to need a lot of hundreds and tens and twenties and fives are going to be highly used just in day-to-day -day life. And I guess if you print enough ones, you're basically just counteracting the effects of the two. But why is it so undervalued from an actual printing point of view? To the point where there was newspaper articles Florida man of course it was Florida man thinks two dollar bill exists I mean that title I can only imagine or actually I can only imagine it's both real and fake at the same time but with the fact that the cashier and the police for goodness sake don't believe that they're real and so it would be interesting to see if you could survey the whole country let's say through a referendum if you could do a referendum and see how many people believe they're fake or don't exist and how many people have ever held one in their hand that would be a massive massive amount of data but it would be very interesting I think Next Next we travel north for an entirely more modern banknote, Canada's new vertical $10 bill. This note is polymer, meaning made of plastic, yeah. and sees Viola Desmond, a black businesswoman jailed for refusing to leave a whites only section at a movie theatre. The banknote features some super cool transparent windows and holograms, yeah, nice. and there's an urban legend that it smells like maple syrup. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it kind of does, even if some angry Canadians dismiss it as pure nonsense. <laughs> what? Now look, I don't want to get too many people doing this face either, but to be fair, if he's saying it kind of does, I don't know how you can kind of dispute that considering there's an urban legend about it, and kind of evidence about it as well. But no, coming back to the actual banknote itself, yeah, it's an incredible note, it's so detailed, the polymer just allows for such incredible printing and colours, you've got Halifax in the background there, all of the incredible colours that are showcased throughout this entire banknote, the UV aspects, the invisible ink aspects, and I believe it's a little bit tiny to read, but you have the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom Section 15, like they've included so much historical data in this one banknote, it is honestly pretty incredible. And really, you know it's a Canadian banknote when you know it's that kind of purple. The rest of the denominations are slowly being switched to vertical designs in the coming years too, with the $5 oh, wow. bill supposedly being announced any day now. Now I haven't heard about that one and maybe people can let me know because this video is a year old and so is it out yet or not? I'd love to see it. I can only imagine it would follow a similar style to the old one, even though the actual kind of patterns of this look quite new and modern. It would be interesting to see just this vertical banknote and have the entire series go vertical. It's a 
an interesting change because when you're folding them in a wallet, it doesn't make any difference. But I feel like for people, you're going to have so much more verticality and room to make them bigger. You know, like he's only taking up, what, a third of it, where she could easily take up way more than that. And she takes up basically half of it right as she is now. Let's stick with the theme of vertical banknotes oh, and travel to Switzerland, which right. are possibly the single coolest on this list. Switzerland has had vertical designs for decades, and each note bears a different key motif. Time, light, wind and matter, as well as different sub-themes such as talent, creativity, wealth of experience and scientific expertise. Jeez. They feature some incredibly fine details, such as a list of the country's highest peaks in teeny tiny silver writing <laughs> on the 50. I mean, I know it's Switzerland, but that is a long list. My goodness, you wouldn't want to include every single mountain range or every single peak because you take up an entire banknote on its own. But look at that. They are incredible. They are so detailed. Time, light, wind and matter. And then they also had the other ones in there as well on the reverse side. And they've done all of that without even using what a quarter of the entire note is just basically pure white. And you can even see that they've gone to the extent to change the world per one. You know, you got all the wind currents. You got, I don't know what that would be for light, maybe different scattering effects, really effects you've got the different time zones and then matters just i guess the earth in general because that's exactly what it is and you can even see that they've got the perforations or i don't know what they would feel like but they look like some sort of perforation and texture thing you got one two three and a bundle i guess probably 200 lines but no they are incredible i love those and each denomination sees the globe rotated okay. slightly differently so when viewed in order it forms a complete rotation of the earth Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate since I don't have the 100 and 1,000 franc notes. Oh, they have a 1,000 as well. Look at that thing. Back to the purples, though. I mean, I guess Australia does have the 10 cent, the $1, the $10, and the $100. But to have 10 to 1,000 all within banknotes, that's a massive scale. They have now been released, but all the foreign exchange bureaus are currently closed thanks Look to this now. delightful lockdown. That's also from Europe, the Norwegian Krone features these aggressively modern pixelated designs on their reverse, and yeah. I've got to admit I'm really rather fond of them. The 50 Krone sees a beacon of light with the lighthouse on the front, whilst the 100 sees an abstract design of a cargo ship. Oh. The 200 sees a slightly questionable fishing vessel, and the 500 <laughs> depicts a more recognisable oil platform. Well look, I like the fact that they're going out on a limb here and they're doing something different, but I feel as though they just need to increase the resolution just a little bit. Like for that to be an oil platform, I think that's just a little bit of a stretch. Let alone the one he said that this is a fishing boat, I mean I guess you've got the bow and a couple of different things yeah maybe a stack there and whatnot but if you asked me what that is and i had no idea and he didn't tell me i'd go no idea it could be anything i mean to be fair to the detail there is an incredible amount of it in here you've got so many different types of fish you've got a weave in there you've even got fishing hooks for goodness sake and so it has been so finely printed as well as all of them but like i said just a bit more resolution might be helpful obviously there's a lot more to these banknotes than just what i've pointed out but it's this modern element that's seen them take a drastically different approach approach to any other country, and it certainly paid off. From neighbouring Sweden, we see the Swedish krona. What I love so much about these notes is that rather than focusing on historical or political figures like many countries do, these notes portray important people from the creative industries. The 20 krona sees children's book author Astrid Lindgren, with a colour-changing book and children's illustration. The 50 sees composer Evert Torp besides a boat in musical score, whilst the 100 features actress Greta Garbo and a role of film. The 200 sees film director Ingmar Bergman and a clapboard. And once again, I couldn't get hold of the two higher denominations. Oh, Thanks a bunch, Lockdown. Sadly, they aren't in the same high quality that he provides, but at least we get all of them here and both sides as well. And here we go, if we come down to the 500 and the 1000 again. Okay then, I wonder who these people are. There is no way I'd be able to know. I guess maybe she's a performer and I don't know, maybe he's part of the UN. That's the only thing I can kind of gather from these. But no, these photos don't really do them justice because they just don't have the detail or even the saturation really. You know, we come back to these ones and you see the colors are actually a lot more vivid than in the other photo. And so no, they are incredible and it's nice like you said you just have a bit of a divergence away from i guess more political figures and so in a similar way to the last ones you know they went pixelated and i guess abstract in that way where these ones are just going more creative endeavors with people instead of political figures and that certainly does not mean that they aren't important historical figures for goodness sake there is no way that you would make a banknote if you haven't contributed majorly to a country but every country has to have its own thing and it's nice to see i guess sweden just propping up their arts instead of just following all the other countries and going yes this is our king queen politician whatever else you might be having scotland proved to be by far the highest voted country scotland. by my subscribers and i'm very wow. embarrassed to say i don't have many of their banknotes the uk as a whole uses pound sterling and the notes yeah. i often talk about are just those issued by the bank of england 
In Scotland, the banknotes are issued by three banks. The Bank of Scotland, the Royal Bank of Scotland, and Clydesdale Bank. <laughs> of course, notes... of course, you got to have a Clydesdale Bank. I was going, how else are they going to say the Bank of Scotland? But no, they're just completely diverted and go, ah, Clydesdale Bank it is. The notes can be used interchangeably with the English versions and across the United Kingdom, although seldom seen outside of Scotland. In fact, I'd argue that they're significantly rarer here than the $2 bills are in America, and there are significantly more cases of them being refused as people think they're not real. For me, these notes have proved exceptionally difficult to acquire. These notes I do have have been very kindly sent to me by my subscribers, and they are absolutely beautiful. What I'm finding really interesting is just the colour choices that virtually every single, I guess especially polymer country is going down, you know, there is always a bluey purple in there, there is always a red in there, there is generally a green. I mean, yes, you need to make them nice and different, you can't have just shades of different red because that's going to get people mixed up if they're just looking at colour, and you're generally going to have, let's say, four or five or six denominations, but it's interesting that even the blue in this particular case seems very similar to the Australian blue and also to the Canadian blue and also to the UK blue. That one kind of makes sense though. And so in saying that, I would like to know how many of these have actually been printed because he said they are seldom seen outside of Scotland and that makes sense because their currency is going to stay within its own. People are going to use, I guess they're going to use pounds because if you're traveling from England to Scotland, you're going to have pounds and you know that you're able to use them. So you're not going to transfer them. And if you were in Scotland, you're probably going to be taking a few pounds to the UK so you don't have to deal with people calling your money fake all the time. So that's certainly understandable, but I'd like to learn just a little bit more about these notes, and it sounded like he does too, but I wish he zoomed in so we can see the detail, because I just love all the different, I guess you'd call them texture in the printing. Finally from Europe, we have the Hungarian Forint. Wow. Now these banknotes were included in my World's Coolest Banknotes video from four years ago, as a single coolest under UV light. I mean look at them, they're incredible. Yeah. UV ink is a security feature that most banknotes do have, but these are by far the most elaborate. Yeah. But I'm actually really disappointed to have to include them again. Oh. It's been four years and no one has released a more impressive design. You know you're having a tough life when the most disappointing thing for four years is the fact that these banknotes have not been beaten in a UV sense. I mean, I'll concede that they are pretty darn cool and a lot of effort has gone into the UV. I'd like to see, what it, where was the originals? Yeah, here we go. There is no way you'd be able to see those designs without the UV light because some of them I feel like kind of share an area with colour changing ink or just generally they change colour under UV light. You know, like the horse and the crow and the arch and the flowery thing i'm not too sure what it is and all these different things if they change just themselves but no they don't at all they actually go the opposite they go pitch black and everything else starts to pop out i mean i guess actually that's why i was a bit confused because it does pop out but it just moves over to a different area but you can't see it at all and so yes i can understand why he would have voted them as number one under uv light but they are very impressive but it's still come on you need to just move on if that's the most disappointing thing well actually the lake district of all places did with the local okay. currency that saw constellations glow when exposed soon. to UV light, but the currency wow. has now sadly been scrapped. Anyway, oh, let's head over what? to a... I would need to look at these again because he skimmed over them. I guess they never really came out and these are just designs, but wow, look at them. They're very bright and white. Generally, I can imagine that countries don't want to make white notes because of the ability to get tarnished and dirty, but I guess if you're just going to go for it, you're going to go for it. And I definitely like the reverse side here. I feel as though this is kind of the level of detail that the other one should have had. Instead of being pixelated, it should go blocky, still giving the kind of texture and the idea of what it is, but not just make it impossible to understand because you can see they've been able to include different mountain peaks and all these different textures within the notes and especially under UV light but you can still make out the general shapes of the entire note and so I love what they've done so sadly they weren't released I can only assume is what he said but the currency has now sadly been scrapped yeah. anyway let's head over to Asia now all of the banknotes I'm about to mention oh. I've made individual videos on in much more detail so I'll Here just give a quick overview of one particular feature from each from India, we see the vibrantly coloured rupee, exploring the country's history and world heritage sites on the reverse. Yep. The 20 rupee is the most recently released, and sees the Ellora Caves on the back, a giant monastery temple cave complex cut into the rock. Once again, you're just seeing all of the detail. Like I said, it's kind of texture to me. It's not real texture because it's two-dimensional, but it gives the illusion that it would be textured just by using a few dots here and there and just giving it different, I guess, densities of colour. Really just allows all of these notes, all of these polymer notes, and even the 
the American notes just to have incredible depth and three dimensionality. I mean, I do want to come back to here because it proves my point again. And you know, you have a blue and you have a purple for goodness sake. I mean, the other colors are definitely a bit more similar to one another. And I don't think other countries really have that besides the yellowy, goldy, orangey version of every country. As though some of it, or especially this one has been painted with watercolor instead of more vibrant ink. Either way, they are clearly very detailed and I didn't get to see the back of all of them except for the 20. And I guess sadly in a way they chose chosen one person for all of them, but at least they chose a good one being Gandhi. From the Philippines, we see some equally colorful notes Car, that explore the purple. nation's natural wonders and wildlife. These notes are wonderful and really do the country's biodiversity justice, yeah, including nice. a tarsia, a palm civet, and even a whale shark. Once again, just a boatload of color. Look at that, that is so bright. And you've got all the colors of the rainbow here. Well, more so you've got all the colors of the purple and the oranges here. But regardless, when you see them all together like this, you can appreciate the level of design and the investment that has gone into the design, even down to the fact that kind of they overlap in a way, you know? I can imagine that's an easier way to print and cut and everything like that. But especially when you see them lined up, you go, oh, that's a nice little kind of, not an Easter egg, but I'm gonna call it that. Malaysia's ringgit notes are very colorful again. yet again. Wow. And a really cool insight into the country, self-described yeah. as distinctively Malaysian. The images featured on the back range from a Rafflesia, the world's largest flower, to the country's first prime minister during the Declaration of Independence. There's also some super cool symbols under UV light. And that is what I'm finding most interesting about this, that so many of these countries, I never would have expected to have this level of, I guess, technology and even just investment into their own banknotes. From the fact that they are polymer to start with, you know, every single one of these besides the American note has been polymer, which is an interesting kind of fact because these are the coolest ones and they are generally or always the most colorful ones and just the coolest in general because you can fit so much more technology into them. They're just awesome in every way. As look at this, once again, you have the purple, you got the red, the green is actually a lower denomination, a blue, an orange, another blue, but that, you know, all these detail is just packed into it and it stays locked in there forever. I mean, I am curious with any country that has chosen to just have one person on all of their notes, why have they done it? But more so, what happens at the end of the lifespan of these notes or actually the end of the lifespan of the person? I mean, I guess the British Empire has a similar problem if you want to call it that because the Queen has been around ever since any currency that's going to be in current circulation has been in circulation. But I guess at least with our notes, there's a little bit more diversity with who is actually pictured on the front and the back with these ones, where it's just one person, like with Gandhi. Or, well, I guess that doesn't make sense. I don't know how that works then. Anyway, I'd love to know. And then we become millionaires with the Indonesian rupiah. The banknote I specifically want to talk about is the 75,000 rupiah note, released to mark the 75th anniversary of independence. Wow. It celebrates the country's achievements including infrastructure, transport, and science, and also features a series of children in traditional Indonesian attire. Well, obviously, I just had to pause it here to admire the detail of it, but something I'm picking up on is every single note seems to be using a very similar pattern of shapes. It, they love the diamond shape, especially within just making people's faces. I think every single one has virtually used this shape or some variation of it. I mean, obviously in the satellite, you're a little bit more restricted and you actually want to show what it is. So you use squares. I mean, I guess a diamond is kind of a square, but the level of detail within this note and for a commemorative note is incredible. I mean, not for a commemorative note, but it is a commemorative note. I mean, the fact that it is 75,000 is definitely interesting. It puts kind of the inflationary currency into perspective, but I love how they've kind of just ignored it. They've gone 75, and just three little zeros following it. I mean, they clearly haven't done it with the other nodes, but considering they've released one, I can only assume that over time, all of them will eventually just get rolled through and updated to the modern format. Now, once again, I've already made a comprehensive Here video about the Australian dollar, so I'll keep things brief. Look it was that. Australia that invented polymer banknotes, and even decades later, they're still leading the world in terms of innovation. These that banknotes window. are beautiful, with transparent windows that span the entire note. There's also some super cool microprint text that forms the stems of the plants, and it actually prompted some mockery a year or two back when someone spotted a typo on the $50. In all oh, fairness, really? it's absolutely minuscule. So small, in fact, that it's oh, impossible no. to read with the naked eye. The poor person that was, I guess, ironically enough, responsible for the design and I guess even checking the note. How do you miss something like that? I mean, I know how you do, but that's what you'd be telling yourself, wouldn't you? I mean, at least, like you said, it's such a micro print. It's not a massive deal, and I can only assume they would have fixed it, but you'd just be eating yourself alive if that was you, wouldn't you? I mean, I do quickly want to comment on the fact that I absolutely love that fully transparent window. It is so cool. The fact that you kind of have two notes or visually you have two notes, especially in this background, it works 
works so well. And I remember the first time that I was holding these notes, I was like, wow, these are incredible. They're so shiny still as well. Okay, so everyone just treats them with such respect. They're so amazing. And everyone goes, oh, look, I got a new one because the old ones are still in circulation. And I guess eventually they will be out of circulation, but there is still so many around that when you get a new one, you go, oh, I'm going to keep this one just a little bit more special, I think. And look, everyone can argue to the cows come home that the fact that Australia did or didn't invent it and Canada invented it or the UK invented it, but I'm just going to say that we invented it because he say that we invented it. And look at our notes, for goodness sake, everyone's copied us anyway. Finally, we'll finish this video off in New Zealand. The New Zealand dollar has been officially voted the world's most beautiful series of notes, and it's not hard to see why. The front see a variety of important figures, from Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to summit Mount Everest, to the Queen. The reverses feature an array of native flora and fauna, which can be again seen in the transparent window, and has a colour-changing Maori-style art on the front. I haven't actually made a full video about these, so expect one soon. I mean, look, I guess if we have to lose to someone, New Zealand isn't the worst one in the world. They are certainly beautiful, and look at the amount of detail, like with the rest of them. The colours and the detail and the design and all the different tessellating patterns, I love it all. I mean, it's no fully transparent window from top to bottom or left to right, depending on if it was a vertical bank note, but hey, I guess if they want to take number one spot, I whatever, New Zealand. But no, there is clearly great historical reference about all of these banknotes. Once again, the diamond shape, like I said, that's the only shape that anyone ever uses to draw people, and I wonder why that is. Uh, it clearly works, I guess. And look, I also can't skip over the fact that they have another purple. Australia is one of the only people in this entire list that doesn't have a purple, and I wonder why that is. Especially with the historical significance and idea that purple is so royal and conveys wealth and money. It makes sense, but I'm just intrigued that everyone chooses virtually the same colours. And so this video was incredible just to showcase so much of what the world has to offer from a design point of view, from the fact that some choose to go a more traditional route. Switzerland had more of a scientific route, which is actually really cool because I don't think anyone else really did that. Obviously Canada has incredible detail and just colours and UV ink that they've all copied from Australia. But no, the fact that just every single country has their own history proudly on display in vivid colours, beautiful colours, in beautiful detail, each with their own historical significance significance that honestly the foreigners are never going to truly be able to feel and that's fine because it's for the people of the country and so I think that every single country that has made it onto this list should be so proud of what they've made because that was awesome to view and an awesome video as well I have to give a shout out to that because it's just so cool to see all these different parts of the world just coming together like that but anyway in saying that I reckon I'm going to call it there so thank you for watching this video if you did enjoy it feel free to do the YouTube algorithm things down below also if this is the first video of mine that you are watching then make sure to go check out any other ones I've done also make sure to go check out the original video down in the description below because that was awesome or hey maybe even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future but all in all have a good one and see ya